go, go, go. Let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick. I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most. I tell her no bitches, so extra. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me, niggas. They wanna fight, they some bust. The Sage of Six Paths floated between the planes of life and death, overwatching his descendants and family be slaughtered and kill each other. After the deaths of Hashirama and Madara, he decides to make a decision. He's going to create a vessel for the next reincarnation of his son, Ashura. He creates a dojutsu better than the Sharingan in order to combat the next reincarnate of Indra and defeat him or her. This is how the body of Naruto was created and sent down into Kushina once she was of age. On the night of Naruto's birth, something extraordinary occurred. Once the baby was born into the new world, a light surrounded his body and he continued to glow. Seeing that his plan had worked, Hagoromo wished his creation luck. No, not his creation his third son. Minato is able to force the masked man to retreat and goes to see his son and his wife. He looks down at the glowing child. Something told him to seal the entire nine tails into his body. No, that was still too risky and he doesn't know why he thought that in this moment. He'll just give Naruto majority of the beast and still what's left into himself. This plan does work. And Naruto manages to survive, but at the cost of his parents' life. He's found by Haruzen, who's told about Naruto's situation by dying Minato. Lord Third thanks his successor for all of his work in the village and the wars that preceded it. And he allows him to rest with the thought that his son will be greatly taken care of. Haruzen, while holding Naruto, looked into his eyes. These eyes... We're not just regular. The baby was born with a dojutsu, which had never even been heard of. He hid this fact from Donzo and many others who were important in the Leaf Village. Naruto would be dropped off at the hospital once his glow and his eyes returned to a regular state. Damn it, Minato. Just how many secrets do you want me to keep? Years begin to pass, as once we start again, we see a six-year-old Naruto. He was known around the village as a monster, but some admired his strength. Even at this age, Naruto was incredibly talented and strong, but this caused some arrogance. Naruto was seen walking around, taking a bite of an apple. While looking at the people around him, an adult man in the area walks right into Naruto on purpose, causing him to drop the apple. Naruto says nothing as the man then walks past him with a smirk on his face. He also begins to laugh until he's hit on the head with the apple. You drop something. Why you little... The man rushes towards Naruto who dodges fist with grace and would also smile. I pity you. Naruto then slams his fist into the man's face, sending him into a wall. Shocking Naruto, the man manages to stand back up and wipes the blood from his mouth. You've done it now, brat. The man then walks towards Naruto, but he decides to walk away. And as he does so, Naruto sees the Uchiha crest on his back. He shrugs this off and walks over to another apple stand and takes it without saying anything. Later that day, while laying on the ground, gazing at the stars above, Naruto is surrounded by several people, all with glowing red eyes. What a nice surprise. But today isn't my birthday. One of the men then pulls out a blade and tries to stab Naruto while he lays on the ground. He easily evaded the attack and broke the blade in half. As right after, he knocked out the men with no effort at all. So, this is who you guys chose to attack me first? Just look how pathetic he is. Naruto picks up the man by his hair and points a kunai to his neck. So what will it be? You guys, or him? The rest of the Uchiha scoff and begin to attack Naruto. He would put a handicap on himself, and only dodges their attacks and doesn't strike back just yet. 
This begins to anger the Uchiha, as Naruto is somehow faster than all of them. Soon, they get tired, and Naruto flips into a tree, looking down at them while sitting on a branch. You all are already tired? I guess the most famous clan. Still, can't even defeat a half-breed Uzumaki. Let alone, if I was to send you. The man from earlier then weaves hand signs and shoots a fireball towards Naruto. In this moment, his eyes reawaken as he does the same. However, his fireball was much stronger and hit all of the Uchiha in the area. They laid in pain with scorch marks on their clothes and bodies, and Naruto now stood over them. He picked up a sword off the ground and walked over to his first victim. He goes to stab them, but is stopped by Kakashi, who's been watching over him. Let's not kill them. Naruto then turns to him, not knowing who he was. You must care for their lives then. I do not, but I care for your safety, and to get on the bad side of the Uchiha, at this age, is not wise. Naruto picks up the holster for the katana and sheathes the blade. Naruto, you can't just take that blade. I do as I please. He lost it fair and square, and it's not like these idiots could stop me. Kakashi begins to walk with Naruto, talking to him about his life. Naruto amuses this for a while, until he points the blade at Kakashi. You obviously want something from me, and since I am a person who only now has this blade to my name, you must want me to do something for you. Kakashi then notes the intelligence of Naruto and smirks under his mask. Come with me. Kakashi takes Naruto to the office of Haruzen, where he would greet the pair. Naruto, I'd like you to join the Anbu Black Ops run by Lord Donzo. Sounds like a pain in the ass, old man. It will be. That's why I know you'll do it. There's no real fights here in the village for you. And I figured the academy that you'll be joining in a couple months will be a waste of your talents. So instead, the Anbu will help you develop your skills. Naruto sits down and laughs. But then he sighs. All right, old man. I joined this little team of yours on one condition. Tell the people of this village who I am. Naruto Uzumaki, son of 4th Hokage Minato Namikaze. Naruto, I can't tell people a lie. Your father was unknown and died in the attack with the QB. Don't lie to me, Haruzen, because with these eyes, I can see through all deception. The Lord's eyes then activate within Naruto, and Haruzen is overcome with fear. Kakashi even grabs a kunai, not knowing if he should defend the Kage or Naruto. Haruzen, if you want me to be a part of the Anbu, that's all you have to do. Simple enough, right? So, until you do so... I'll continue to do as I please in this village and fight whoever I want. Naruto then leaves the room, beginning to walk home as the sun would also begin to rise. He hears a voice in his mind. That was pretty clever of you, brat. Naruto looked around as if he heard the voice of someone, but there was no one near him. You won't find me that easily, kid. Return to your apartment so I can reveal myself to you. Naruto goes to his rundown home and sits down in the middle of it. All right, I'm waiting. In an instant, Naruto is overcome and transported to the realm in his body where Kurama lives. Naruto looks up at the giant fox and sits back down. All right. What? I'm shocked you aren't wetting yourself, kid. What's there to be afraid of? You're just big. You must not know who I am, brat. Well, if I did, I would have known your voice. Isn't that right? You arrogant little. Anyway, I am the mighty Ninetales. I've terrorized this world and village for centuries. Oh, really? Then why is it so peaceful right now? Because I'm sealed inside of you, idiot. But there's something special about you. Kurama looks down at Naruto and can see how similar he looks to Hagoromo and Ajura. He can also detect their chakra deep within Naruto. 
I've decided to help you when you need it most. But for starters, you can take this. The Ninetales taps its sharp nail in the water, changing its color to orange, and that chakra begins to surround the body of Naruto. What is this? Just a fraction of my power that I've chosen to lend you. Use it well, Naruto. The boy then wakes up, noting the difference in his physical strength, stamina, and speed. He spends all day, as usual, training, and he begins to notice many in the village don't even dare to approach him. So, the old man finally told them, if anything, they should have known from the start. He then walks into the office of Haruzen later that day to see Donzo already in there. Oh, you must be my new recruit. Haruzen would nod to his old friend and he watches Donzo walk towards Naruto. You'll be a great addition to the squad that we have available. One of their members just died on their last mission, so you'll be a perfect fit. Naruto nods and walks behind Donzo. Naruto, be careful. This man is hiding something. Don't worry about it, Fox. I can already see through him. But I'm going to use him to get even stronger. At night, we see Kakashi's Anbu team suited up waiting on their newest member. They recently just got Itachi, who was the youngest, but now there's someone even younger joining them. Naruto walks out with a custom fox mask with yellow and orange stripes. He ignores all of his superiors and walks over to Kakashi. He punches him in the stomach, and then swords are pointed at him. That's for spying on me. Kakashi tells everyone else to stand down as they have a mission to complete. As this is where the time skip begins. Naruto is much older now, as he has some scars on his arms and his chest. This version of him far outclassed many others I've written before, as he had access to a large portion of Kurama's chakra, being able to perfectly control even a three-tailed state. Alongside Naruto, Kakashi had grown as well. By having Naruto there, he was often pushed to his limits because of Naruto's recklessness, meaning this Kakashi can use the Kamui technique once a day and still be able to fight at a high level. The Uchiha clan massacre still occurs leading Donzo to getting the eyes of the clan, but I'll touch on that later. Since Naruto spent most of his young life as an Anbu member, he wasn't in the academy as much as the other kids. So instead, he was placed on a Ginning squad with Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha. Their sensei, of course, being Kakashi Hatsuke. Naruto and Kakashi arrive late, and the team goes to the rooftop as each member introduces themselves and the goals that they have for the future. Each answer that they give is the same, except for Naruto's goals. He doesn't have any real goals for him to reach. He just wants to go wherever life takes him. Kakashi tells them that they'll have another test the next day, so they have to wake up early. He vanishes from the area, and Naruto returns to his team. Alright, this should be simple enough for each of you to follow. We're going to be tested to see how well we work together as a team. He's going to have two bells, but don't focus on them at all. The three of us need to work together to just defeat him. Sasuke looks up, asking how Naruto knows this intel. And he would smirk. Don't question me. Just work with me and make our lives easier. So, are you in or not? Sakura and Sasuke look at each other, nodding. The three then make a plan and then go their separate ways for the day. Sakura would catch up to Sasuke. Hey Sasuke, what do you think about Naruto? What do you mean? Well, you know. He's the son of the fourth Hokage. So that means he's strong, right? It doesn't matter how strong he is. He won't be able to defeat a Jonin sensei by himself without us. Yeah, I guess you're right. Do you want to hang out some more? No. Sasuke then walks away with Sakura pouting about her rejection. The next day, the team meets up and Naruto waves to them. Just follow my lead and we'll pass. Kakashi arrives soon after, which shocks Naruto that he's not too late at all. He knows this as a weird, even for their sensei. He must have something planned, 
but it doesn't matter. I plan to overcome anything in this battle. Kakashi explains the bell test with Sakura and Sasuke noting Naruto was right. The test then begins as Kakashi immediately runs away into a nearby forest. Sakura and Sasuke chase after him, but Naruto was far behind and had to chase after them. No, this can't be good. I knew there was a reason he showed up earlier. He already planned for me to tell them. That's it. He's trying to separate us in the forest to take us down one by one so we can't use teamwork. Naruto would catch up to Sakura, but she has no idea which direction Sasuke went because he was too fast. Naruto would tell her that this isn't good, as they need to catch up with him before it's too late. Sakura begins to smirk and goes to stab Naruto with a kunai, but he dodges it and flips over her. Nice try, Kakashi. The sensei then deactivates the transformation jutsu and throws the kunai at Naruto. He misses, but it hits the branch next to him, and then it explodes, sending Naruto flying. You're too complacent, Naruto. The smoke and the explosion alert Sakura and Sasuke where Naruto was. This caused them to look back at the Kakashi that they were now facing. As Sasuke would state, You're not the real Kakashi sensei, are you? Sakura then barely dodges a kick from the clone, and Sasuke sends a fireball right towards it. A water beam is used to counter the attack, and steam is in the area. Sasuke still rushes the clone. Even if the clone is stronger than them, they have a better chance of beating it instead of the real Kakashi. Sasuke blocks a punch from the clone and Sakura jumps back into the battle. Sasuke would watch her dodge a kunai strike and swing her leg. The clone grabs it and throws her over his shoulders and back down into the ground. This knocks the wind out of her and angers Sasuke to rush back in to attack. The two engage in a very competitive taijutsu battle where Sasuke is pushed to his limits. The clone then puts him in a very difficult situation. He places a kunai to the throat of Sakura, who is knocked out. What will you do, Sasuke? Save her or complete the mission? Which one is more important to you? Damn it. He has me right where he wants me. What should I do? No. What would he do in these situations? Sasuke thinks of his elder brother until he has a realization. Itachi would sacrifice her for the mission. And he states, I'm nothing like that monster. In this moment, Sasuke's one Tomoe Sharingan reawakens, allowing him to blitz the clone, saving Sakura and causing it to be destroyed. Sakura wakes up right after this moment and falls even more in love with the young Uchiha. Let's make it back to Naruto before it's too late. She nods and stands back up on her own. When they make it to the area, they were shocked. The Jonin sensei was trembling, trying to stand, with blood all over his body. Sasuke would turn his head to see a tree being knocked down. Naruto stepped through, with a red cloak surrounding his body. So, Kakashi, you thought you'd be able to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. If anything, you've only doomed yourself further. Hey, you two, let's make sure we pass this test. Sasuke and Sakura both watch as Naruto appears right in front of them and places his hand on their chest. Sakura calls him a pervert until she sees the red chakra surrounding her own body as well. What? What is this? It's just a little bit of my power. Kurama then speaks up in the mind of Naruto. You brat, don't go lying off about them like this is your own. Shut up, you overgrown fox. I have a battle to win. Now let me focus. Naruto rushes in towards Kakashi with his teammates behind him. Kakashi creates a lightning jutsu that speeds towards him and Naruto's eyes would widen as he does the same with his overwhelming Kakashi. Their sensei stands with the hand of Naruto to his face. Sasuke wonders why he doesn't just deal the final blow and Naruto would let go of Kakashi. Looks like I win again. Yeah, you got me Naruto. Those monstrous abilities of yours are truly something. You three pass my test. The team smiles and Naruto shares a smaller portion of Kurama's chakra to heal Kakashi's wounds. Next, the team goes on their lower ranked missions for weeks and so they all begin to complain, especially Naruto. They all complain to Kakashi and request to do a higher ranked mission. Naruto tells their sensei 
that he wishes to do a mission outside the Leaf Village, if it's possible. Being here is too boring for him, primarily because he wants to explore the outside world even more as he did when he was an Anbu member. Kakashi complies and takes the group to the Hokage building. Haruzen was shocked to see them, but agreed to give them a more difficult mission. It would be an escort mission to the Land of Waves. Your job is to protect Tazuna, the bridge builder, on his way home. Then, you will need to assist the town in finishing the bridge. The bridge builder walks out with alcohol in his hand and begins to drink it. Naruto turns towards him speaking. If you want a safer journey, it'd be better if that was your last drink. Kid, who are you to tell me when my last drink is going to be? Can you even protect me? Naruto holds his head down and steps towards Tazuna, lifting it. I can make it your last one. Kakashi has to put his hand out to stop Naruto and his arrogance and tells Tazuna they'll meet him at the gate in a couple hours. Tazuna would turn to the Hokage after they leave, asking if a team like that could truly accomplish this mission. Well, Tazuna, if I'm honest, you're getting more than what you paid for. Two of the shinobi on that team were part of an elite unit for a couple years. Well, wait, the sensei is one of them, right? Yes, of course, but one of the ginin was also a part of that unit. If you run into any trouble on the mission, you'll soon figure out who the other was. Tazuna believes the other person Haruzen was talking about was a black-haired boy who seemed to be quite reserved. He knew that loudmouth, arrogant child wasn't a good warrior. Later that day, the team meets up, and it was still pretty early. The only member who wasn't there was Naruto. The group then watched Naruto walk down the main road of Konoha to the gate, with many people cheering and waving for him. By now, he was supported by most. Even those who hated could not deny his abilities and success. As Danto was the one who helped raise his reputation with the villagers. Naruto makes a promise to come back. And he sets off with his team. Now their morale was higher than ever. Tazuna was quite curious, so he turned to Naruto. Why do the people of that village celebrate you as you leave? Before Naruto could answer, Sakura did. It's because he's the son of a former Hokage who helped with the Third Great War. Tazuna looks down at Naruto, who was eating while walking. Yeah, my old man's kind of a big deal. I guess it has its perks and its disadvantages. Like what, kid? Well, for instance, we might just get attacked by my father's enemies who are still outside the village. This gives Tazuna a plan. If they were attacked by anyone, he could just say they were attacking Naruto, not himself, as he would use Naruto as his excuse. This comes in handy, as minutes later, the group is attacked by the Demon Mist brothers. The two jump from a puddle and begin their attack on Tazuna. Naruto and Sasuke both jump into action. Now that he has a Sharingan, the fight becomes much easier as Sasuke evades the first attack and lands a critical blow to his opponent. This sends him back far away from the group as Sasuke rushes forward towards him, dodging the chains and performing hand signs. Fire style. Fire bullet barrage. The rogue shinobi does his best to evade the flames, but they soon swarm his body, leaving an opportunity for Sasuke to finish off the battle with a kick to his neck. With this power still growing, my eyes will soon be able to contend with Itachi. Sasuke turns back expecting everyone to congratulate him on his win. But all he sees is Naruto, now with red eyes, holding his opponent by his face while suspending him in the air. It's either you talk or I'll squish your head. It's pretty simple, don't you think? The rogue shinobi begs for his life and Naruto would sigh. I wish I didn't have to do this, but he's all yours, Kuruma. Naruto and the Miss Shinobi, both, were transported to the realm where Kurama lived. The fox glared down at the rogue shinobi, snarling at him. Fear overcomes his body as he would almost shit himself while looking at the Ninetales. He gives up the information to Naruto and is killed right after. Naruto then walks over to Sasuke, telling him he did good before killing that shinobi as well. All right, now tell us the truth, Tazuna, or you'll be joining them in the afterlife. I have no idea what you're talking about, kid. Yeah, whatever. Kakashi-sensei. 
The rank of the mission has now changed to that of at least a B tier. But let's keep going though. I'm sure if things get truly bad, me and you can handle it. Kakashi would agree and doesn't even question this as he would continue on. With him and Naruto there, it shouldn't be a problem for anyone. The group continues on, and so they reach, well, until they get closer to the Land of Waves, where they run into Zabuza Momochi, one of the seven missed swordsmen who went rogue. Kakashi steps in to fight and tells everyone else to protect Tazuna. Naruto sits down next to the feet of Tazuna and lays against him, and tells his teammates to stay on guard. Oh yeah, and don't wake me up. Naruto goes to sleep right there in the middle of the battlefield. Kakashi and Zabuza continue their battle, but here, it isn't even close. In every aspect of the fight, Kakashi outclasses Zabuza. He even manages to escape the water prison jutsu all on his own. They clash once again with their blades in a locked formation. Zabuza would smirk. I knew I wouldn't be able to beat you alone. That's why I requested for backup. Kakashi's eyes would widen as he flips away, dodging the ice spikes. Haku then begins to attack Kakashi, while Zabuza runs past him and towards Tazuna. Sasuke and Sakura step in the way to defend the bridge builder, but Sakura is sent flying, and Sasuke is able to somewhat contend with this opponent. Even though Zabuza was much stronger than him, he was weakened by Kakashi, giving Sasuke a slight edge with his Sharingan. Tazuna would look down at his leg to see Naruto still sleeping, questioning this. Zabuza sends a water dragon at Sasuke, but he retaliates with a lightning whip. The explosion from the clash still sends Sasuke flying into Sakura. The two were now on the ground and forced to watch Zabuza run towards Tazuna. He swings his blade to cut off the head of Tazuna, who would close his eyes. Yet he feels no pain, none at all. He would open his eyes to see the blade of Naruto blocking the executioner's blade. Damn, that wasn't nearly long enough for me to get a good nap. Anyway, looking at your injuries, Kakashi sensei already beat you. What the hell are you talking about, kid? These are just minor scratches. In one motion, Naruto spins himself and his blade, turning it up, leaving a large slash mark on Zabuza's body. This one strike sends Zabuza on his back, coughing out large amounts of blood. The blood from the initial blow begins to rain down on Naruto, sending chills down the spine of Zabuza and Tazuna. So, this was the other person the Hokage was talking about. Looking at Naruto, he seemed unreal. Even with blood dripping off of his body, he was graceful. Naruto looked down at Zabuza, seeing him still hold his blade. He then stabbed him in the neck and watched his hand slowly let go of the blade. He would look up at Kakashi to see him tired, barely holding his own against Haku. The rogue warrior directs his attention to Naruto, who still stood over the dead body of Zabuza. Haku goes in a rage, blitzing Kakashi and getting to Naruto. A flurry of ice spikes heads right towards him, but as they get closer, Naruto's eyes would change. His dojutsu reveals itself once again as he copies the ability and overwhelms Haku with his own ice, leaving him with large spikes through his torso. Naruto looks up as the frost floats by his face. Not half bad. Naruto then vanished from where he was standing and appeared behind Haku, who was suspended in the air. He pulls his blade from his back and cuts off the head of the ice shinobi. Naruto swings the blade to the ground to get the blood off and then walks over to Kakashi. He would sheathe his blade and picks up the tired sensei, turning around to see Sasuke doing the same with Sakura. Tazuna would lead the group to his home, where they rest for a couple days in order to be refreshed for their training, as after this training they head to the bridge where they're confronted by Gato and his henchmen. However, the people of the Land of Waves rally behind Naruto for some reason and scare off the attackers. Gato, though, is killed by Naruto, and once the bridge was finished, it was named after him. Team 7 travels back to the Leaf, where they're rewarded for their mission. Donzo praises Naruto for his defeat of two formidable foes, and gives him a reward from the bingo book. Donzo also states he expects great things from Naruto during the tuning exams. 
Naruto would just look at him. And with his eyes, he's able to see the chakra from within his body. As the dojutsu gifted to him by the Sage of Six Paths has different properties than any other. As it has the properties of all of them. Well, the Sharingan and the Byakugan. Not just any dojutsu. Meaning Naruto was able to see the eyes that Danzo had taken into his own body. Naruto bows, leaving the room, heading back to the Hokage building. He wouldn't speak at all. He enters in silence, with a serious expression on his face, as someone could be listening to them. He puts a hand over his own mouth and writes down on a piece of paper. He then holds it up so Hiruzen can read it, and this was a message to him. The Hokage's eyes would widen, and Naruto would nod, before burning the paper in his hand and opening a window. Now, with this information, Haruzen's in a tough position, as this isn't something Naruto of all people would lie about. Haruzen then begins to devise a plan in order for Danto's actions and crimes to be exposed. Team 7, during this time, preps for the tuning exams. They trained each day and mastered a bunch of skills which they already possessed. During this time is where Naruto meets with Konohamaru for the first time in this story. The young shinobi follows Naruto around and becomes his pupil. While walking through Konoha, Konohamaru bumps into Gara. Oh, sorry mister. Gara then picks up Konohamaru by his collar and goes to strike him. However, he's stopped by Naruto. If you want to keep your arm, take your hand off my student. Gara and Konkuro step to face Naruto, but Sasuke appears as well, jumping down from a tree. What do you think, Naruto? Should we eliminate them before the exams even begins? No, not yet, Sasuke. I want to show them what it means when you mess with those who I care about. We'll show them true despair in the shooting exams. Naruto turns around, helping Konohamaru off the ground. Gar then grabs Naruto's shoulder, but feels the intensity of the Nine Tails within Naruto. Gara and Shikaku will be overcome with terror, sensing the power. Because remember, this Naruto has most of Kurama's chakra within himself. Only a tiny portion was allocated to Minato in his final moments. More days go by as the tuning exams finally arrives. The written test portion goes as usual, and since Naruto really didn't go to the academy, Rock Lee still picks a fight with Sasuke. Team 7 later finds out where the real testing room is, as each one of them would use their own ability to pass this portion of the test and move on. Next was the force of death. All the teams who passed the previous test gathered around and listened to Anko as she explained the rules. After this, she began to look around for one of the guinea to make an example of, as her eyes would focus on Naruto. He stood proudly and elegantly. Oh, some pretty boy who thinks he's a hot shot. I'll knock him down a few pegs and show him what the real shinobi life is truly like. Uncle speeds towards Naruto to try and scare him with the kunai, but in an instant, he was seen holding that very same kunai to her throat instead. Jeez. If you wanted to throw your life away that badly, just say it. What the? How did you just... Orochimaru then picks up the kunai after Naruto drops it and hands it back to Anko. She then gives them the heaven scroll as Naruto would look back at his team as they would nod and they head deep into the forest. So what's the plan, Naruto? Well, just follow me. I think this method will be most effective for this type of test. Naruto leads them to the highest point in the forest, in a tree, and they sit down on one of its many branches. And now we wait. Naruto then lays down and closes his eyes. Sakura begins to nag him for being lazy, but Naruto ignores her. Sasuke instead stares down from where they were with his Sharingan, waiting on the first team to run below them. Minutes begin to pass, and then an hour before they saw Grass Village Shinobi. Naruto's eyes instantly open, sensing them. He then slid off the side of the branch, beginning to fall with his back turned towards the ground. Sakura called him crazy until Sasuke forced himself to jump straight down as well. 
What am I going to do with these two? She looks down at the faces of her teammates, falling with a smile, and decides to join them. While midair, Naruto utilizes Kurama's chakra to create arms that grab Sakura and Sasuke, throwing them towards the shinobi. Naruto himself swings from branch to branch with these arms, and in seconds, the grass team was defeated before they even knew what hit them. Luckily for Team 7, this team had the Earth Scroll, so they could head straight to the tower. They tied up the team they defeated and looked towards the tower. It shouldn't take us that long if we hurry. Sakura and Sasuke would nod, but Naruto goes to the bathroom really quick. He comes back minutes later, and the team heads off. They stop on a branch, and Naruto looks at Sasuke. Wait, why did we stop? Sasuke then grabs Sakura and stabs Naruto in the chest with the kunai. Sasuke, why did you do that? I knew it, Sakura. That's not Naruto. Very clever of you, Sasuke. But I do have to ask, what gave me away? Naruto would have dodged that attack, even if it was coming from someone who he trusted. Damn you. Cocky little brat. Even when you're not here, you're causing me trouble. Who the hell told you I wasn't here? Orochimaru then looks above in a branch to see Naruto standing there. What the? How did you escape my trap? You mean that overgrown garden snake? Well, if you want to know, here's what's left of him. Naruto drops down a piece of the snake's skin and Orochimaru crushes it within his hand. What is he? I'll just have to leave the curse mark on the Uchiha before I leave. Orochimaru rushes Sasuke, but Naruto appears right in front of him, sending him flying backwards with a kick. After this, an arrow of lightning was speeding right towards him. Orochimaru narrowly avoided the attack and rushed the group once again. A combined flame attack from Naruto and Sasuke would stop him. Orochimaru is then forced to relocate to another branch and dives down back at the group. Naruto is ready for another counter, and he stabs Orochimaru in his shoulder with his sword. However, the signing extends his neck to Sasuke's own, leaving him with the curse mark. Orochimaru disappears into the shadows right after, knowing that a battle with Naruto would be incredibly hard to do. Naruto would look down at Sasuke and creates a clone to carry him. Midway to the tower, Sasuke wakes up and looks to Naruto. The power of the curse mark flowed through his body, causing him to attack Naruto. Sasuke pulls back his arm to throw a punch. But the bloodlust of Naruto wakes him up. His senses will return, and the killer intent leaves his body. This was something he felt before. Yes, it was on that night. The night Itachi killed his family. Sasuke looks down at his hands, remembering the blood of his parents that stained them. Sasuke then begins to have a mental breakdown from his memory, but is knocked out by Naruto. We don't have time for this. Team 7 finally makes it to the towers where the preliminary matches would be announced. However, Sasuke was still asleep during this tournament and announcement. Well, he was woken up by Naruto. But when he woke up, he had unlocked the two Tomoe Sharingan from his trauma. With these, I'll defeat my opponent. Naruto then leans over the railings, watching this battle as Sasuke completely decimated his opponent in combat. Next came Sakura, who truly disappointed Naruto, as she somehow tied and lost at the same time. She claimed she won, which Naruto disagreed with by folding his hands and laughing. The next battles that piqued his interest were Hinata vs. Neji and Gara vs. Rock Lee. Each fighter Naruto wanted to face in the future rounds of the tournament, but then came his own match. Naruto jumped down to face Kiba, wondering what attacks he would use. But then he saw the dog. Naruto saw this as a weak point in Kiba's strategy. And one second once the match starts, Naruto held his blade to the neck of Kiba. Kiba would somehow bite the blade, but it didn't break through it. And this allows him to throw Naruto. Naruto then looked up to see a fang over fang, heading right towards him. He easily evades, kicking Kiba right in his stomach. Kiba would look up, to see Naruto holding Akamaru hostage with the kunai in his hand. This forces Kiba to give up, shocking everyone else that he would lose his position in the tournament to become a chunin for the dog. But I guess you could say that showed their bond as well. 
Soon after this, the announcement would be made that they would be given time to train before the shooting exams continued any further. Naruto decided to take this time to rest until he was found by a man with long white hair. So, you're the son of my former student, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto would look up from the hammock he was laying in, smirking. Jiraiya the Toad Sani, I've heard the stories about your life, and I'm not interested in helping in any of your research. Kid, your balls haven't even dropped yet, so I don't need your opinions on any of my research. You don't have any taste in women yet. Oh, really? Naruto then sits up, doing the sexy jutsu, giving Jiraiya a nosebleed, as he would begin laughing while pointing at the old man on the ground. But back to business, Jiraiya. Why have you come to find me? It can't just be because my father was the fourth Hokage and your student. Well, I want to train you, Naruto. Is that so? Well, what will this training do for me? I'm going to become a Chunin either way. Don't you want to learn this? Jiraiya then shows off the Rasengan, which actually amazes Naruto. Its color was amazing, but Naruto knew this jutsu wasn't going to give him any trouble at all. Naruto would smile, and then he gets serious, looking at Jiraiya before laying back down in the hammock. It's an amazing technique, but I've already mastered it. No, that can't be possible, as it's your first time seeing it, right? Naruto would nod, but still holds out his hand while laying down. He creates a Rasengan, but its color was white as Naruto's chakra takes on its purest form. Jiraiya didn't even know if this was a regular Rasengan, but either way, its power was incredible, nothing like he's ever seen before. Jiraiya shows Naruto a couple more techniques in Jutsu, but he mastered them with no effort at all. At the end of the day, Jiraiya would take Naruto to Mount Miyaboku, where he decides to show him summoning Jutsu. Naruto looks down at Jiraiya, and he smirks. Once again, Naruto would sit down, not knowing if he actually wanted to show off, but he decides Jiraiya was waiting on him to do it since he's copied everything so far. I like the idea of Toads, but I've got something that more suits my style. Jiraiya nearly has a heart attack as Naruto summons the Ninetales and lays on its head. Hey look, Karama. You're in the real world now. Not so thanks to you, brat. You could have learned this technique ages ago. Yeah? Well, I wanted you to wait like a good little fox. The Ninetale snarls, throwing Naruto off his head into the ground. What was that for, you overgrown house pet? I'm no such thing, you brat. If anything, you're a lazy loser. I am not. Naruto then lays on the ground smiling, with Kurama still scolding him further. Jirai would interrupt them, asking Naruto how he was able to control the Ninetales. Naruto opened one of his eyes, looking towards Kurama. Well, at first, I believe he hated me, and the thought of us being friends. But then I beat him in a fight, and then again, and then I did it one more time after that. And by then, hey brat, that's enough. Naruto looks back into the sky. So, what else can I learn while I'm here? While looking down... Jiraiya decided that he might as well go and help Naruto learn everything that he already knows. Naruto returned after a month of training to find out he was facing Neji Hyuga in the semifinals. He jumps down noticing Sakura was the only one there from their team. Whatever, it doesn't matter who's watching me. Neji gets in a stance and prepares himself for the battle. I know he's stronger and faster than me. Relying on my technique and defense is the only way to win this battle. It's the Hugo way. For the pride of my clan, I shall defeat you here today, Naruto. Hey, Neji, what are you thinking? Without even realizing it, Naruto had his hands in his pockets while leaning on the back of Neji. I, I couldn't even see him move. I hate not to give the people what they want to watch, but I think a fight with Gara. Well, I want to fight him more than anyone else. Tell me, Naruto, can you defeat him? Even if he were to fight with more ferocity than he did with my teammate, can you defeat him? Well, if he were to show off his real power, the one that's inside of him I'm speaking of, it may give me some trouble. 
but I'd win regardless. Neji nods and then goes to strike Naruto. The blonde dodges and palm strikes Neji instead. What the? He was able to counter me that easily? Naruto weaves through another attack and pulls out a kunai. He then goes to slide it across the chest of Neji, but was pushed away by the 360 palm rotation. It seems as fate would have it. We would clash here today, Naruto Uzumaki. As the son of Akage, you were always destined for greatness, but as a proud member of the Hyuga branch family, I was not. Still, I wish to be a rival of yours, so do not look down on me and hold back your strength. Naruto, well, begins to get serious admiring Neji for his admirable qualities. That's my mistake, Neji. Allow me to show you what a true rival of mine should be able to deal with. These eyes will show you the truth. Neji gets a look at the eyes of Naruto and they're breathtaking, their color, their pattern. It screamed. Undeniable strength. Just what kind of dojutsu was that? And then he decides to ask Naruto that question as well. Truthfully, I have no idea, but it's allowed me to become this strong. Naruto pulls out a kunai with the kanji on it as Haruzen stands up in shock, saying that it can't be. Naruto, you couldn't have mastered that jutsu within a month's time. Naruto throws the kunai right by the head of Neji who doesn't flinch at all, but he appears right behind him grabbing it. The pure Rasengan slams into the back of Neji, sending him flying into the wall of the stadium. Those in attendance have no words as they've just witnessed two S-ranked jutsu within one match. Naruto was on a completely different level than the rest of the Ginin here. He's also declared the winner of this match and is congratulated by Sakura and Shikamaru. Naruto would wish Shikamaru luck, pushing him down the railing as he watches him fight as well. Eventually, Sasuke arrives to fight Gara. Naruto watches on, studying the techniques of Gara, saying it won't be too hard for him to defeat him. Sasuke here was much stronger and had some control over the curse mark, as he didn't have Kakashi suppress it. He's been using it throughout their training, and now it was paying off. Copying the speed of Rock Lee also helped out as well, because he was able to run laps around the Sanjin and Shiriki. Sasuke weaves in and out of the sand attacks with lightning building up in his hand as he thrusted it forward into the shoulder of Gara. He screams out, My blood. My blood. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And then begins to transform. As this went on, feathers from the sky began to fall. As many in the stadiums who were not strong enough fell under a genjutsu. Sakura watched as Sasuke chased after Gar from the stadiums and looked around. She turned to Shikamaru and Naruto, noticing they were both asleep. I know you idiots are faking. Get up and help me already. They didn't move after she said this, and Sakura held out a kunai. If you two don't get up now, you'll wake up bald. Naruto and Shikamaru immediately sat up and began waking up those around them. Naruto then turns to the tracks of sand left by Gara and tells Sakura that they don't have much time to catch up, so they need to move quickly. She nods as the two track down Sasuke. As sand was coming right for him, Sakura jumped in front of him. Don't worry, Sasuke. I'll save you. A wave of sand rises above, creating a dark shadow, but is stopped by a huge wall of ice. Man, you two really are hopeless. And what the hell was that, Sakura? I said grab him and get out of the way, not to stand there. She laughs, saying she knew Naruto would handle it, as this angers him, so he knocks her out with the genjutsu. I don't have time for these games. Sasuke, take her out of here and get away safely. Wait, Naruto, I can help you. With this power, I've become even stronger. Sasuke, as he says this, begins to feel the drawbacks from using the curse mark without the enhancement pill to go to the second stage, so he falls to one knee, and Naruto looks back at him. You're too weak right now. Once you get strong enough, then you can help me in battles like this. Naruto throws the kunai over the wall of ice and vanishes. Sasuke falls to his face with his final thoughts, comparing the words of Naruto to the words of Itachi. 
such similar phrases and statements, but so different at the same time. Naruto floats above Gara, who was beginning to transform and threw down a kunai. That cut Gara's face. He looked down at it to now see Naruto standing there with his katana. Gara isn't able to process what happens before the blade slides across his stomach. Naruto would smirk, but jumps away as the sand around Gara's body expands and he fully transforms into Shukaku. Naruto would look up, wondering what he should do, but then he decides this won't be a problem at all. So, this is the strength of another Jinchuriki. Well, Kuruma, what do you think we should do? The Nine Tails inside of Naruto stands up on all fours, asking to be let out. Naruto then performs a summoning jutsu, with Kurama appearing. Alright, let's do this. We don't need to kill him. All we need to do is get close and I'll do the rest. Kurama blocks the sand and rushes towards Shukaku. Two of the tails then hold the arms of Shukaku, and Naruto flips off the head of Kurama and lands right in front of Gara. He holds out one of his hands, creating a giant Rasengan and slamming it down. This frees Gara from the one tail's control, and the two of them begin to fall, but they're saved by Kurama. The Sanjin Shuriki wakes up, questioning why Naruto would save him. You haven't even realized yet that me and you are one and the same. People at one time despised me for being a Jinchuriki as well, but I made them understand. How? How did you gain the support of others who hated you? By mastering my own powers and become strong enough to protect my home. People respect strength, so that's what you must achieve. But never forget to have a heart as well. Gara understands. But Naruto continues. But it seems, your tail beast needs a little help. Naruto enters Gara's domain where Shikaku lives. In an instant, Shikaku senses the power of Hagoromo inside of Naruto. You mind doing me a favor? What is it? Become friends with Gara. You might not want to, but in the long run, it's going to help both of you. Shikaku wants to disagree with Naruto, but now saw Kurama towering over him. He then agrees under the condition that Gara has to listen to him more. Naruto says he'll see what he can do and leaves the realm. On the outside, he looks down at Gara's seal and gets an idea. This shouldn't be too hard to fix. Naruto upgrades it before walking back towards the village. Kurama vanished and Gara just lays there until he's found by his siblings, talking to Shikaku. Naruto then grabs Sasuke and Sakura on his way back and sees that the fighting was over. The Hokage was killed, along with many others, and the plans that he had to expose Danzo went down with him, or so Naruto thought. This angers Naruto, who knows he can't just kill Danzo right now. Many of the other villagers would celebrate Naruto's victory and his mastery over the Nine Tails. Once this was all over, the funeral was held, and then the Leaf begins to rebuild their infrastructure. Naruto was in his apartment room, still planning. The plans that were left to expose Danzo were now in his room. It could still work, but Naruto doesn't know if his influence is big enough yet. A knock on the door was then heard as Naruto looks through his peephole, but it was Jiraiya. What do you want? I have a mission from the elders. How do I know you're not Orochimaru or a spy? What's your nickname? Naruto, stop playing around. My nickname is the Toad Sonin. But you, you like to call me Pervy Sage. Naruto sighs, opening the door, asking what the mission was. Let me come in and I'll show you. Jiraiya walks around into the large apartment to see the big windows and soundproof walls. Pretty secretive, don't you think? Well, when you're making a plan to expose someone of all their crimes, you have to be. Naruto sits back down, going through what was left to him by Haruzen, as Jiraiya looks down at the ground at all these papers, and tells Naruto that once they find the next Hokage, she can help him as well. Naruto turns to asking who it was going to be. My good old friend, Lady Tsunade. Are you sure she will accept? That's why I'm bringing you with me. Whatever. I'll be ready in a couple hours to wait for me at the gate and lock the door behind you. Jiraiya nods and leaves the room. 
Naruto compacts the information into a scroll and puts it into his bag. As he takes it with him to show the next Okage, hopefully, it will convince her. Naruto meets up with Jiraiya, and the two then head out. As they leave the village, two others then enter the land of fire in search of Naruto. Days of travel pass, as Jiraiya doesn't really need to train Naruto along the way. They focus more on putting the evidence, well, the evidence together within the scroll. Meanwhile, in the Leaf Village, two Akatsuki members are then confronted by the Konoha Sensei. Kakashi attacks Itachi and is putting up a good fight. When Itachi goes to use Tsukuyomi on Kakashi, it's countered by Kakashi's own Mangekyo Sharingan. Both fighters are left in a weakened state from the use of their ability, and the two Akatsuki members would flee and head to find Naruto. By the time they do catch up and knock on the door, both Naruto and Jiraiya were still in the room. Naruto looks through the hole and tells Jiraiya to put the papers back in the scroll quickly. He does so, and the two of them combine their Rasengans, sending Kisame flying into the back wall. Surprisingly, he gets up with ease and pulls out Samehara. Itachi, I'll cut down the one with the white hair. You make sure we get the brat. Itachi then looks over as he hears a voice. Itachi! This other voice came from down the hallway, as this is where we see Sasuke standing there with the lightning beginning to surround his hand, with the Sharingan now active. He rushes towards Itachi who tries to move, but he can't, because somehow sand was holding his feet still. Sasuke yells out Chidori, but the attack is caught by Itachi, who slams him into the wall by his throat. Still not enough hatred, younger brother. He then puts Sasuke into Genjutsu and turns around to Naruto, who has a blade to his throat. You move quickly, but it's not enough. Itachi turns into crows and reappears behind Naruto. Enough with the games. I'll end this. Naruto uses the power of the Nine Tails alongside the Lord's eyes. Itachi didn't know that Jinchuriki had access to this much power already. It doesn't matter though. If Kisame is able to defeat Jiraiya, they can overwhelm Naruto. Itachi turns his head to see Jiraiya in a perfected sage mode, standing over his comrade. Damn it. He then used the Amaterasu, and Jiraiya would see it coming. Or more, how do I say this? Sense it coming. He flips back and watches Itachi grab Kisame and head towards the wall. Black flames then block his path, and he turns back, seeing the bleeding eye of Naruto. Did it? Did he just copy the Sharingan's ability? Itachi then has to jump through a different window while processing this and escapes with the barely alive Kisame. Naruto wonders if they should chase after them, but Jiraiya says they have more important things to do, and Naruto would agree. He then turns back, creating a clone that takes Sasuke to the Leaf Village's hospital. He'll deal with that problem later. Jiraiya then states Tsunade will probably be able to heal him, and Naruto agrees. They then continue their search, until one night they would find her. Naruto allows his sensei to do all the talking, and she still refuses. This is when Naruto speaks up, handing her the scroll. The reason I need you to become the Kage is all detailed inside of here. All of that information was left to me by old man Haruzen. If you don't want to become the Hokage, I'll find you tomorrow and take back the scroll to someone who's going to help me use it. The two then leave Tsunade there with Shizune. She thinks nothing of it until the middle of the night where she wakes up from a nightmare. This causes her to light a candle and then open the scroll. Her eyes widen just from the shock as she remembers the deal she made with Orochimaru. She spends hours reading over the information until the morning arises. She still heads out to meet with Orochimaru, but she plans to capture him instead. She meets with them and fakes the healing. Kabuto is still able to warn Orochimaru and their battle begins. Orochimaru summons a snake and so does Kabuto which caused Tsunade to summon her slug. She knows she's outmatched here, so she needs to be careful. But, Jiraiya and Naruto show up. Let's make this fight a little more interesting. Naruto summons the Ninetales and rips apart the snake of Kabuto. Naruto then watches him fall through the air and he jumps off the head of the QB. Naruto hits him with the Rasengan, sending him crashing down into a pile of rocks below. The Ninetales then turns to the snake that Orochimaru was on, 
and he was forced to throw a poison gas into the air. The Nine Tails protect Tsunade and Jiraiya while Orochimaru escapes. Tsunade thanks the Beast, and Kurama turns to Naruto. He was laying in the grass, looking at where Kabuto just was. Don't tell me you let him go. I didn't. He just vanished pretty quickly. Kurama sighs and does the same. The group before then travels to the Leaf Village, where Tsunade heals Sasuke and many others who were injured, including Rock Lee. Then, a ceremony is held for her to become the next Hokage. She would call Naruto and a few others into her office as she promotes them to the rank of Chunin. Those new Chunin being Naruto, Sasuke, Neji, Shikamaru, Gara, Tamari, and even Rock Lee. After most of them leave, Naruto is the only one who's still there. She hands him a different scroll, and Naruto nods. He then vanished using the flying Raijin, which almost gave Tsunade a heart attack. Naruto opens the scroll in his room to see it was a message. Tsunade stated it would take some time before they can expose Danta for his crimes, and so he burns the scroll. A couple days pass, and Sasuke at night is approached by the Sound Four. He agrees to go with them, believing the curse mark's power will one day help him to kill his brother, and it's a power he must chase. Sakura confronts him, asking him to go with him, and he knocks her out. She then wakes up and reports this mission to the Hokage. Tsunade then requested the help of the newly promoted Chunin and Ginin to do this mission. Naruto was seen laying on his hammock under a tree when he was approached by the group. Sakura explains the mission and Naruto gets up. Alright fine, let's go. I was hoping my first mission as a Chunin would be interesting anyway. The team leaves the village and search for their comrade. Each member takes on a different person from the Sound 4 and so we get Naruto versus Kimimaru. Naruto, with his eyes, can see that he was sick, so this battle shouldn't be too hard for him at all. He pulls out his kunai and his Anbu Katana. Kimimaru creates a bone sword and rushes Naruto. The two swing their blades clashing over and over. Naruto is faster and stronger, but Kimimaru's technique and his Keke Genkai was able to hold his own against Naruto. This was good because Naruto was having fun battling here. The leader of the Sound 4 would then swing his blade at Naruto, who swiftly dodges but does the same. It would have slashed right through his shoulder, if not for the bones that came straight out of it. Naruto then kicks him back and pulls out multiple kunai. Each of them landed around Kimimaru as Naruto blitzed him using the flying Raijin. There was nothing Kimimaru could do, as he could only create boned appendages to block the attacks and Naruto knew he had to end it soon. If he didn't, Sasuke would get far away. Luckily for Naruto, Rock Lee arrived after completing his own separate mission that he was given by his sensei. Naruto thanks Lee before heading in the direction of Sasuke. He catches up with him in the Valley of the End, and Sasuke would smile. So Sasuke, you really don't intend on coming back to the village? No. Now leave, Naruto. Sorry, but I can't let that happen. Well, Naruto, you'll have to drag me back to that village. Oh, that won't be a problem at all. Naruto blitzed Sasuke, kicking him in the chin, sending him flying across the water. He then appeared behind him, holding out a Rasengan. But Sasuke saw this coming as he grabbed onto the shoulders of Naruto, flipping right over him, making him miss. Sasuke then jumped higher, using the fireball jutsu. That won't work and he knows it. Naruto does the same, but his overwhelms Sasuke's. From the corner of his eye, Naruto then sees Sasuke with lightning surrounding his fingertips. Naruto allows him to stab into his shoulder and would smile. I got you now. Naruto would slam a Rasengan into the chest of Sasuke, sending him into the leg of Madara's statue. What is he? Sasuke looks back up to see Naruto healing from his injury and walking towards him. This causes him to use the curse mark stage 2, as is awakened for his lust of power. He flies towards Naruto, kicking him and then landing several blows. Naruto managed to counter each one of them, so he wasn't taking any heavy damage. Sasuke knew this wouldn't work, but remembered what Jirobo had told him, as here, Sasuke has a quick flashback of Jirobo handing him a poison and telling Sasuke what to do. The young Uchiha then crushes the small glass of poison in the face of Naruto, 
causing his eyes immense pain. Then, Sasuke adds chakra to his fingertips, and he enhances the seal of the Nine Tails. This was the plan Orochimaru created, which gave Sasuke the win in this battle. He continuously beat on Naruto until he was passed out. Sasuke stood over him, with his Chidori in his hand, but the power of the curse mark began to strain his body, making it disappear. Sasuke then limped away, hearing someone coming, and he turned back to Naruto, looking at his almost lifeless body and scoffs. The next time we do battle, I'll defeat you with my own power. Sasuke vanishes into the dark forest, and Naruto is later found by Kakashi. His body was weak and seemed to be extremely sick, as his skin was pale. This made no sense as the Ninetales should be healing him. He has to do something about this. Kakashi would look at Naruto's seal and could tell something was off. He picks up Naruto and speeds back to the Leaf Village. He doesn't even wait, as he takes Naruto right to the office of Tsunade. She looks down at the weak body of the Chunin as chills run down her spine. Immediately, she begins to try to heal him, but this just wasn't any regular poison. It was already in his bloodstream, but it was affecting his whole body and could kill him. Tsunade spends days with Naruto trying to do her best, but then she falls to her knees one day while trying to heal him. Jirai, who was also in the room, would question this, asking her what's wrong. With tears in her eyes, she sits there for a moment, with pure shock in her face. I... I can't heal him. Jiraiya had no words for the woman, as he thought she, of all people, could heal Naruto. Just what happened to him in that final battle? As Jiraiya's thoughts lingered, Kakashi entered the room, with a sealed bag. I found this near the battlefield. He shows it to Tsunade, as it was the poison, and it was still in there. Well, a little bit of it. She nods and thanks Kakashi, and goes to study it, hoping she could develop an antidote from it. Jiraiya watches as Kakashi looks over at Naruto before walking over to him. I've never seen him in this bad of a condition before. This poison, it must be serious. Yeah, it is. Even Tsunade is having trouble dealing with it. The most she says she can do, well, is stall it for a little bit from entering his heart. Kakashi lifts up Naruto's shirt and asks Jiraiya if they can do anything about the seal. Jiraiya stands up walking over and looks down. This has to be Orochimaru's doing. He places his hands on Naruto's stomach and does his best to break the enhancement on his seal, but notice that it's going to take him a lot of chakra to do so. Kakashi then has to assist him, which causes Naruto to finally open his eyes. He looks at them with his blurred vision, and then down at his own arms. He was so weak now. Just what happened? He could hear the voices of Jiraiya Kakashi, but he couldn't even talk to them. He didn't have the strength to say anything back. Naruto tries to telepathically communicate with Kurama, but there was no answer. He looks up and down at his stomach to see their hands there. As they were trying to break the seal, Naruto coughs up purple blood. They immediately go get Tsunade who comes into the room helping. Naruto looks at her and then closes his eyes once again as he could finally speak. Damn it. I really messed up this time. Without Kurama, I don't think I'll be able to recover. Just where did Sasuke get something like this? Naruto is bedridden for five months until someone comes to visit him. It was night and for some reason Naruto woke up from his sleep. Above his head, he saw a floating man in robes. Hello there, my son. Naruto goes to talk back, but he can't, as he would hear the man in his head as well. I see. So you've become this weak. It is my fault. Since I made you stronger, Indra's spirit allowed its next vessel to become stronger as well. I have no idea what you're talking about, old man. Who is Indra, and who are you? Are you going to heal me? The Sage of Six Paths then shakes his head. I can do no such action. 
as I've only come to warn you, if you do not recover in the next month, you will die. Tell me something I don't know, old man. Well, there is one person who could have a cure for this poison. Oh, really? And who is that? I have an old friend, but he does not live within this dimension. It seems you've already met him as well. Well, can I get a hint? Let's see. He's not a human. That should be all you need to know. Naruto would nod. And then he tries to get out of bed. But he coughs up blood. But he manages to sit up. How much time did you say I have? Well, if you begin training. Less than a month. Naruto nods and would focus all his chakra. Well, all the chakra that he can manage. And he manages to transport himself to Mount Miyoboku with the flying Raijin. He lands on the ground and immediately spits out blood. Damn, this isn't good at all, but at least I made it. The toads quickly surround him and bring him to Fukusaku, who is shocked to see him there, especially in such a bad condition. What happened to you? I got poisoned. I see. Well, I don't have any cures for that here. Oh, yes, you do. You can help me get Karama back. Fukusaku then looks at the seal placed on Naruto's stomach and says it's going to be hard to get rid of it. You'll have to endure a couple weeks of pain in order for me to break it. That's fine, so let's get started. Fukusaku, here, has many techniques that he's learned from the Sage of Six Paths and that they've created together in the time that they spent together. So, he would actually be more helpful than even Tsunade. Two weeks go by. As during one of their healing sessions, Fukusaku watched an orange chakra slowly surround Naruto's stomach and spread around his body. As Naruto then entered the realm where Kurama was, it was completely dark. There was no light at all. The eyes of Kurama lit up the room, and Naruto turned to him. Look at you now, brat. You got cocky, and it seems you become weaker. This is your own fault. If you had taken the battle serious from the beginning, you would have won. I told you not to hold back. Yeah, I know. I was reckless and I paid for it. Whatever. Let's move past it and go finish our mission. Kurama would laugh and put out his fist. As Naruto does the same, as when he wakes up, he was in KCM. This is much better. Naruto looks at his hand to see that the power... The power that he had is slowly returning. The KCM cloaked and vanished. Naruto's body felt a little bit better, but he could still feel the poison lingering in his body. He thanked Fukusaku, who would ask him, well, what he's going to do now, and how he knew that the toad could heal him. Well, I have a mission I need to complete. And that information, well, it came from your old friend. He told me. No. You couldn't have met him. He died long ago, long before any shinobi nation. Say what you want, you old frog. I know who I talked to. Naruto vanished from Mount Miyoboku and appeared back in his own apartment. He looks around and he turns on the lights. Home sweet home, right Kuruma? Now, let's see here. Naruto finds his old Anbu uniform and then heads out of the village. Back within the base of Orochimaru, we see Sasuke training with Kabuto, as by now, he had far surpassed his old self with just a few months of constant training. He knew Orochimaru was becoming sick, but it wouldn't be a problem for him as he could still grant him more power. After this daily training is complete, Sasuke heads back to his room where he closes the door and then looks in the mirror. He washes his face and then looks up to see a masked figure standing there, before he could even react. Naruto was holding the blade to his throat. That's some poison you had on your hand, Sasuke. Tell me, where's the antidote? Sasuke instantly knows who this is. So you managed to recover from it. I expected as much. Sasuke smirks, but is then knocked out by Naruto. He then walks out of the room and turns to see Kabuto leaning against the wall. 
So, you need an antidote. What if I told you how you could get it? Why would you help me? Well, let's make a deal. You kill Orochimaru and leave this base intact. And I'll get you the antidote. Naruto's blade is then pointed at the neck of Kabuto. I'll kill you if you're lying. Kabuto nods and then explains. You see, that poison was developed through the sickness contracted by Kimimaru and Orochimaru. Not only that, but it was amplified by the toxins extracted from the body of Orochimaru himself. Once that was done, we mutated the poison in our labs. Truly, it is dangerous. And if not for you being an Uzumaki, you should have died that night. That's just how scary your clan's genetics truly are. Anyway, just follow me. Naruto walks with Kabuto through the base, and the two walk into the main laboratory, where he shows him the samples of the poison. He then shows Naruto the antidote, and Naruto takes it before walking towards the exit of the room. You've held up your end of the deal. Now I'll do mine. Naruto then turns around, throwing a kunai into the container holding the poison. As next, he heads to the room of Orochimaru. However, it seems Sasuke had beaten him there. Lord Orochimaru, I request more power. So eager, Sasuke. No matter, come closer so I can grant you your wishes. Sasuke gets closer, and as Orochimaru lifts his neck to enhance the curse mark on Sasuke's body, he cuts off his head. After this, he stands over him, and with the acid-based substance, he uses it to melt down his body to nothing but bones. Naruto then transforms into himself, going back to the room of Sasuke, taking him with him back to the Leaf Village. As the next morning when he returns, the guards question who he was. Oh yeah, Naruto then takes off his mask, revealing himself to the guards who are shocked. He then heads to the office of Tsunade, walking into the room to see Jiraiya, Kakashi, and Sakura. He lays down Sasuke across the floor and tosses a blue contained liquid to Tsunade who catches it. There's the antidote, so let's mass produce it. Instantly, Sakura runs over to Naruto, hugging him, glad that he was okay. And he says he'll be fine once he gets the antidote. Jiraiya would wonder where he was and how did he get help, and Naruto had to explain what happened, except for the part about the Sage of Six Paths, as he believes he must keep that a secret. Days then go by, as Naruto fully recovers after getting the antidote, well, basically like an over-the-counter medicine that was produced from it. Now, Naruto was at his full strength, but he seemed different. Naruto was more serious than ever before, and he walked as if he had a new purpose. This version of Naruto, because he was so close to death, would be even more like Adam. After calming down Sasuke, Tsunade would remove his curse mark, causing him to rage out once again. But she decides to reveal something. Naruto walks in the room and sits down to see Sasuke there as well, who would question, what the hell are you doing here? Trust me, you don't want me to be here for this. Tsunade then stands in front of each of them and tells them how Donzo has manipulated their lives. She explains the reasoning behind this and the reasoning behind the Uchiha clan massacre. And then she explains why Naruto was hated for the early parts of his life and what truly happened during the night he was born and how a lot of people were kept away from the area where the Ninetales was, where his parents died and how he was being groomed to be a weapon. Both of them sit in shock while listening. Sasuke can't believe that an elder of the leaf would do this, but Tsunade calls Donzo a traitor. Sasuke then begins to breathe heavy and even scratch at his own body, not believing the information just told to him. It has to be a lie. It has to. But Tsunade states that Donzo even has the eyes of his clan right now, and he's already run away, but they're beginning to track him down. However, Sasuke, you and your brother are not the only Uchiha left. There are still many of your clan who are scattered around the land of fire. The problem is finding them before Donzo can get the hand on their eyes. Sasuke couldn't even hear the Hokage as he was having a mental breakdown, which caused Tsunade to tie him up 
as she wondered how Naruto was doing, but turned around to see him standing up with only a single tear in his eye. He then punched a wall, cracking the entire room's infrastructure, which shocked her. This world was built upon corruption, and I'm going to be the one to fix it. And only one person can become my equal to help me do so. And that's you, Sasuke. So overcome your emotions and then join me to make things right. Naruto looks back at Sasuke with the Lord's eyes as he makes a promise to help him. As he then leaves the room, going to get some fresh air. And he sees the sun setting on the horizon. Naruto stands there near a tree with a swing, looking forward until he feels someone watching him. Who's there? This is when Hinata comes from around a tree. It's me, Naruto. Oh, hey Hinata. Did you come to look at the view up here too? Yeah, I did. I didn't expect someone else to be up here as well. Well, we can look at it together. The two stand for a moment, until Naruto sighs and sits down. Hey Hinata. What do you think of me? Be honest. Her face turns red as she begins to stutter and move around a lot until she calms herself down. I think you're a great person. Because of you, there were so many changes within the Hyuga clan. You inspired Neji to do so much. You've helped me out more than you know it too. I think you're really a kind-hearted person. Naruto smiled. Thanks. I needed to hear someone other than myself say it. I just feel as if I could be doing more. I love being a shinobi, but this isn't what I want my legacy to be. I still wish to explore the entire world. I think you should then, Naruto. You've helped everyone else follow their dreams, so why not follow your own? Naruto looks to Hinata and then stands up hugging her. Thanks for the advice. I needed it. She blushes watching Naruto walk off, as the next day, he goes to visit Sasuke, seeing him sit there silent now, with brand new eyes, as he had the Mangekyo Sharingan, but they were still only 14 by this point. Naruto unties Sasuke, and he looks up at him. Naruto holds out his hand, smiling. I'll let you make the plan this time. Sasuke grabs the hand of Naruto and stands up. First, we hunt down Itachi and then get him to join us. After this, we'll hunt down Donzo and get our revenge. Then we'll correct the shinobi world. Naruto nods, and the two of them head to the office of Tsunade, shocking her that each of them could recover from this information so fast. They explain their plan to her, and she has some questions of the two if they could handle it. So, she postpones the mission, which angers them, but instead, she gives them one year to prepare. They would still complain, but they agree to go with Jiraiya. The three of them to depart for their training, and Jiraiya takes them to Mount Miyaboku. He doesn't want Sasuke to learn Sage Mode, as it could prove to be a double-edged sword in the future. However, he does want them to be training together and far away from the rest of the world. The two begin overcoming their emotions. If they were to battle Donzo, he would pull different tricks that they must prepare for. Their training was intense, especially since the two trained together. Their rivalry seemed to be revived, and now they could keep growing. A year passed quickly, as we now see Naruto and Sasuke much stronger than ever before, and they head back into the Leaf Village. They walk into the Hokage's office, and Tsunade can barely recognize them, as they would completely obliterate their old selves. A year has already passed, well, I believe the two of you are ready. Where's Jiraiya? Oh, Pervy Sage said he was going to investigate the leader of the Akatsuki while we do our own mission. The details of his location and his objective are in the scroll. Naruto hands it to her and then throws over his hood. As Sasuke does the same, and the two exit the leaf once again. Naruto, what will you do after our goals are accomplished? I don't really know. Why do you ask? Well, I'm going to rebuild my clan with my brother. But you, you don't have a clan to do that with. Jeez, thanks for the reminder. If anything, I'll travel the lands. 
and discover more of this world in which we do not know. What an airhead answer. Most of the world has already been mapped, Naruto. There's nothing new to discover. Whatever, Sasuke. Let's just focus on one thing at a time. For some reason, Naruto thought of Hinata when thinking of traveling the world. This caused him to jump from branch to branch faster, and Sasuke followed closely behind. The two first headed to the land in between fire and wind. They would arrive looking for clues on the Akatsuki, but Naruto remembers that they were hunting down the Jinchuriki. So instead, they get the idea to head to the Sand Village to ask Gara if he knows anything. As they travel and get closer, they begin to see someone in the distance. No, it's two people, both in black robes with red clouds. As Sasuke and Naruto know who they are. And one was holding Gara. Perfect timing, don't you think, Sasuke? Yeah. Amaterasu. Dator is then forced to drop Gara, and then Sasori goes to catch him. Quickly, Naruto shows off his speed, kicking Sasori away while grabbing his friend. Daedara shoots out multiple clay birds at Naruto, but each one of them is then pierced by Sasuke's lightning. The two now stood back to back, looking forward at each of their opponents respectively. Hey Sasuke, I'll race ya. Sure, we can bet lunch on it. Naruto put on his steel knuckle weapons and began to charge his own chakra. The Lord's eyes activate and he vanished from where he was standing. He appears right above Sasori, slamming his fist down. His opponent tried to dash away to evade, but his arm was ripped off from the power of the strike. Naruto, well, his left foot barely grazes the sand before he takes off after Sasori once again. The puppets then come flying right at him. Oh, this is getting interesting. Naruto then watched the puppets dance in slow motion, but they still won't be fast enough. His first strike went through each of them with no problem at all. Sasori felt true fear seeing the smiling face of Naruto destroy his creation so easily. The hundred puppets then appear and Sasori reveals his true form. Naruto only cracks his knuckles and says to himself, Let's speed this up, Kurama. He enters KCM, demolishing the puppets, including Saucer himself, in seconds. The pieces of ninja technology rain down around Naruto as he turns, seeing Sasuke stand over a defeated Daedara. Looks like he's still alive, so I win. Well, I couldn't kill him without gaining some information first. Oh yeah. After Sasuke extracts what he needs, he kills Daedara. Naruto then sends Gara back to the village with the clone where his clone would also help heal Kankuro. Now, the two head to the Uchiha hideout, and once they find it, Kisame stood in their way. He says Sasuke is the only one that's allowed to pass, but as Sasuke jumps by him, he cuts off his head. Naruto stares on in disbelief, as he thought he was just going to get to sit and wait, but Sasuke motions for him to follow as well. They arrive in the old base to see Itachi sitting there, waiting on them. He asked where Kisame was, as he was supposed to stop Naruto, but Sasuke began to explain. He's going to rebuild their clan, but first they need to get rid of Danzo. Itachi begins to laugh and puts his hand on his face. Well, younger brother, if you wish for me to join your side, make me. Show me your strength and the hatred that you've acquired. Their battle takes place and Naruto stands at the ready but doesn't have to get involved at all. This Sasuke was already much stronger than Itachi, and it was evident through their battles. Even if Itachi wasn't sick, he wouldn't be able to keep up with Sasuke and his movement speed here. Once the battle was finally over, Itachi revealed his sickness to the two of them. Naruto tells him not to worry, they have a plan for that as well. Naruto takes Itachi to Mount Miyaboku in search for Fukasaku who finds him, as the old toad helps heal Itachi of his illness, and the three go to hunt down Donzo. On their way to his last known location, Itachi asks Naruto why he was helping out Sasuke. What made his younger brother so important to him? Naruto explained how the two of them are connected as shinobi, as they're kind of like brothers in a way. Itachi was happy that his brother made a true friend that could fight by his side. Even with all the hatred in his life, 
Sasuke seemed to somehow fight for peace and the peace of others. They find Danzo's last known outpost. The three then begin to head inside and look around, as Itachi is the first to find a clue. He heads to find the others, but the three of them were scattered around this large building. As he dashes forward, he has to jump back, dodging the blade of an Anbu member. But why would they be here, of all places? Flames then came off his blade, coming straight towards Itachi, who instantly recognized the Jutsu. No, it couldn't be. So who is that behind that mask? At the same time, Naruto would run into an Anbu member who uses wood release, and Sasuke runs into another one, who has a similar power to that of the curse mark. Each of them has to overcome a great threat in order to get to Danzo. Sasuke would dodge the ink paintings that come to life with ease. The power of the curse mark allowed this masked warrior to get even closer to him though. Sasuke then counters his blade and cut through his mask. This revealed Sai, who had a curse mark that was similar to Sasuke's own, but, well, it wasn't the same. Sasuke activated the Sharingan and rushed in at Sai. The ink paintings began to get closer and closer, but one of his arms was then cut off. Sai then slams the other one to the ground, revealing a seal that electrocuted Sasuke, making him fall to the ground. Sai pointed his own blade at Sasuke's neck, but then wakes up from a genjutsu as he was tied to a chair and slowly bleeding out from both of his hands being cut off. Just when did he... You underestimated the power of the Uchiha. Now you won't get the chance to do that again. Sasuke moves on down the path as we next focus on Itachi. He was on the defense of dodging the flames of his attacker, who then used the body flicker technique to create clones. Itachi jumped back using the Phoenix Flame Barrage. This caused the clones created from the body flicker to then spread out around the room. Itachi headed right for the real one. He gets past the clones and then uses the kunai to cut through the mask. What revealed was Shisui, who somehow had both of his eyes. No, that's, that's impossible. I've watched you die. Yeah, you did. But I was saved by Lord Donzo. You tried to kill me by pushing me off that edge. Shisui then appeared behind Itachi. You're a traitor who would kill your own clan and your best friend. Shisui, what are you talking about? We were betrayed. Itachi blocked the attack and then flipped back again. Don't act like you forgot what happened that day. You betrayed us. Itachi blocks another attack before flipping away once again. If this was Shisui, he must be being controlled by Genjutsu. But no, that wouldn't make any sense at all. If Shisui has a Sharingan back, that means he should be able to break through it. Unless... Itachi rushes back in throwing a punch. Shisui managed to dodge it based on instinct, but then is hit by the kick of Itachi. So, those eyes. They're fake. They're not the true Sharingan. Alright then, Shisui. Let me show you the truth. Sukuyomi. Shisui would then get flashes of all their memories together. And, he relives his life as a shinobi up until this point. And when the Genjutsu is released, he falls to the ground. He has tears in his eyes and a broken spirit, but he looks up thanking Itachi for saving him. The two talk for a while until Itachi realizes they need to find the others. Sasuke was already running through the large base in order to find Naruto. He could sense and hear a battle going on, he just couldn't find it. Instead he found Itachi and Shisui. Meanwhile, Naruto was demolishing Yamato in battle. How is this possible? I thought wood release could subjugate any Jinchuriki. It's supposed to be your weakness. Naruto breaks through the trees and then punches his fist through the stomach of Yamato. I have no weakness. Yamato falls to the ground and Naruto rips off the ceiling tag that he placed on his own chest. Looks like it actually came in handy after all. Kuruma, are you still there? Yeah, I am, brat, so don't be so loud. Whatever. Let's just hurry up and find Donzo. Naruto then focuses on gathering Sage Chakra and enters Sage Mode. Throughout the base, he can see Sasuke, Itachi, and some other Uchiha who they have with them. That's strange. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The more people we have, the bigger chance we have against Donzo. But he also saw that they were running right towards him, and he was sitting on a throne. Naruto stands up and immediately begins heading that way. 
The four of them then regroup in the room. So, you finally made it. A little faster than I had hoped, too. But, it doesn't matter. Here, you all will meet your end. Itachi and Sasuke waste no time using their Amaterasu to burn Danto, but he uses the Izanagi. Itachi explains the ability to the rest of them and how they need to counter it. However, Naruto was already on it. He ripped off the arm of Danzo and then tossed it to Itachi. Is that better? Danzo then glared at Naruto who stood next to him. Just how did he... Oh, it seems you have another one as well. Danzo tried to dodge the attack, but Naruto was faster. Naruto ripped the eye from his socket and goes to crush it. However, Shisui yells out for him to stop. And Naruto looks to him, questioning why, but Shisui reveals that that's his eye. So he just tosses it to him, and Shisui catches it. Donzo would try to sneak attack Naruto here while it seemed he wasn't paying attention, but Donzo himself was sealed by the Tosca blade of Itachi, who reacted quickly. The group then decided to return to the leaf where a bunch of things would happen. First, Itachi goes to read the stone tablet. The group would go with him, and once he reads it out loud, Naruto questions him. That's not what it says. They would turn to him, wondering how he would know. But Naruto shows off the Lord's eyes once again, and changes the tablet to his original form, shocking the group. Still, Itachi and Sasuke have to switch eyes in order to obtain the EMS. Now, the three of them were going to head out, and find the rest of their clan. Naruto looks for Jiraiya, and then Tsunade takes him to the hospital, where Jiraiya was in critical condition from his last battle with pain, where he barely manages to escape with his life. Naruto was saddened by this, but didn't have any anger on his face. Tsunade found this odd, but actually interesting as well. So, what will you do? I will wait for him to arrive here, and then I will finish what my master started. Naruto then departs from the building and goes to meditate while watching the sunset. What do I truly desire? Days pass until the Yamanaka clan senses danger within the village. Pain floats above, but is set flying far away by Naruto. After crashing on the ground, the diva path looks up to see Naruto. Well, if it isn't, the diva path is then punched through by Naruto. He dodges the other five paths of pain quickly as he speaks no words rushing back in with kcm he dodges each of their attacks ripping through them with ease however they just seem to keep coming back and there's nothing he can do about it naruto soon figures out which one of them is reviving the others and immediately destroys it with a rasengan naruto then flips over another path kicking it far away he grabs the animal path by the head and then spins it off. The diva path has no words for Naruto. He wasn't just strong. No, his strength was undeniable. It's as if he was a god. Naruto defeats all the paths except for Pain himself. He begins to walk towards him with his hand held out and a tail beast bomb would form. Naruto then disappears and slams it into the back of the diva path, forcing it into the skies. This is where a large explosion goes off and it even could be seen in the leaf village. Naruto then looks in the direction of Nagato and begins heading that way. He arrives in the cave to see Konon and Nagato. What now, Naruto Uzumaki? You're going to kill us and continue the cycle of hatred? No, I'm going to defend my home. It's not my job to decide who lives and who dies. I have sympathy for you, since you are also the students of my master. So I'll let you decide your own fate. However, if you attack my home again, I won't hesitate to take your life. Naruto leaves Nagato with these words and travels back to the leaf, where he's celebrated for defending everyone. Tsunade also decides to call a Kage summit and leaves Kakashi in charge of the village while she's gone with Naruto. During the summit, Kabuto and the masked man would appear as they declare war on the great nations. However, it seems they only have shinobi from at least the hidden rain, sound, and the clones of Zetsu. However, these ones were much weaker than the original. They also had access to the shinobi from the past. 
The masked man would show off his renegon and points to Naruto. The nine tails will be mine soon. Before they could warp away, Naruto punched a hole through the chest of Kabuto. He didn't have his senjutsu or snake senjutsu yet, so he couldn't sense the attack coming. Naruto pulled out his fist and then slightly turned to dodge the masked man's attack. Pretty slow for someone wanting to start a war. Naruto swings his other fist but it goes right through him. What an annoying jutsu. This is no mere jutsu. This is the power of Madara Uchiha. Who is that? Obito then doesn't know what to say. Excuse my ignorance, but I didn't spend much time in the academy. Oh, trust me, I know. I've been monitoring your life, Naruto Uzumaki. The masked man then looks down at Kabuto knowing he wouldn't last much longer, so they warped away quickly. The five Kage then form their alliance and begin preparing for war. Instead of sending Naruto and Killer B out on a mission, each one of them was on the front lines. There was no need to hold them back, especially since the enemy forces wasn't as large as their own. The white Zetsu appear on the horizon, and Naruto looks forward. He activated the Lord's eyes and says they wouldn't be a threat at all. In fact, since there were only about 200 of them there, Naruto would begin smiling. He appears right in the center of them, and then above his head forms a giant white Rasengan. He slams it down, and Jirai was shocked. As it began to push some of them back, the white Zetsu's number are then divided in half, maybe even less than that. Naruto then rushed in, using the Lord's eyes to demolish everything in his way. He used only simple movements and dodged their attacks with perfection. It seemed that Naruto's taijutsu was on a completely different level. By the time the alliance made it all the way up the hill, Naruto stood over the bodies of the white zetsu. Well, let's not stop here. There's most likely more on the way. The other parts of the army are doing just fine as well, as they clearly outnumber the zetsu. The second wave of them starts to arrive, but this time, they're led by a revived shinobi from the past. Naruto looks forward to seeing a yellow-haired man arrive to the battlefield. It was Minato. The two walk up to each other, and Minato looks down at him. There's no doubt about it. You're my son. You're Naruto. The voice of Kabuto then rings throughout his head. It doesn't matter who he is to you. Kill him. Kabuto then forced Minato to slam the Rasengan into the chest of Naruto, but he evaded it, and Naruto slams his own hand through Minato. I see. So that's what this is. You were revived. Now you're being controlled. How clever indeed. But it still won't be enough to defeat me. Naruto flips away, but Minato appears right behind him. Look out, Naruto. Naruto blocks the attack and then kicks Minato away as he would land on some rocks. Yo, Naruto. It's me, Ino. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. What's going on? Is there trouble back at the base? No. I just need you to describe the enemy that you're facing right now. His chakra signature seems to be a lot stronger than many others. Oh, I see. Well, to put it simply, it's my father. Naruto then looks up, dodging a Rasengan, and then has to keep dodging Minato's attacks, as he was now seen in KCM, blocking more of his attacks as well. He was somehow revived. I can defeat him, but I don't know how to break the control of Kabuto. That's what I wanted to tell you. Sasuke has returned, and he made contact with us. Him and his clan are spreading out throughout the battlefields to help us out. But Sasuke himself is heading with Itachi to handle Kabuto. All you have to do is hold out until either they release the Jutsu or our sealing Shinobi, the team makes it to you. Naruto flips and dodges more of Minato's attacks while talking. Which option is faster? Well, it's better to bet on our Shinobi as there's only minutes away. All right, then. I'll bring him to you guys. Naruto, wait. Naruto ignores her and speeds right towards the alliance, with Minato following him. He activates KCM as well, and the two dance around the shinobi with rapid succession attacks. And then, Minato would defeat him easily. But this was a clone, 
As the real Naruto appeared behind him, slamming a Rasengan into his body that sent him down into the ground. The sealing shinobi then began sealing Minato. Well done, my son. Tell mom I said hi for me. Yeah, I will. Naruto looks up into the sky as the revived shinobi begin to return as well. However, another group emerges right in front of him. It was Obito and the former Jinchiriki. Here, they were not dead, but they were being controlled. They transform into their tail beast state, and Naruto smirks. Well, it's now or never, right Kurama? Let's go, Naruto. The two enter Kurama link mode and tower over the other tail beasts. As the Battle of Biju was about to commence, two others arrive to the battlefield, Itachi and Sasuke. Each shows up in a full body Suzuno. The masked man and his Biju are then defeated within minutes, and he's killed off and sealed by the Tosca Blade, leaving his identity hidden from the world. Soon after, the White Zetsu are defeated and the war comes to an end. The Uchiha decide to create their own town near the Land of Fire, but don't wish to be a part of the Leaf anymore. Naruto and Sasuke both get ready to depart from the Leaf Village after months of staying there. Jiraiya and Tsunade were sending the boys off on their journey, but there was a crowd of people there as well, since they were the heroes. Naruto walked over to Konohaburu, placing his hand on his head. When I return, I hope to see you as the Kage. You got it, big bro. Naruto then walks over to Jiraiya, hugging him, thanking him for everything. Naruto then turns around, but before he can leave, he sees Hinata running towards him. She would ask to come with him, and Naruto thought about it. I don't see why not. Let's go. Naruto and Hinata head off into the world with Sasuke calling him oblivious until Sakura would ask to come with him and stay with the Uchiha. He would sigh and tell her to come on as they had to catch up with them. Naruto, Sasuke, Hinata, and Sakura all keep running forward until a waterway would depart them each on their own path. Naruto and Sasuke end with a fist bump, saying they will see each other again and figure out who truly is the strongest.